the battle over government surveillance programs is being fought by a unique coalition of lawmakers. Oregon Senator Ron Wyden serves on the Intelligence Committee and was one of the few lawmakers sounding alarms for years, although without being able to explain why, because of the secrecy of his position, long before Edward Snowden went public. Uh, Senator, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Andrea. Well, in, in this context, what is your view today of Edward Snowden in the Moscow airport asking for asylum in Russia, hardly a country that has freedom of expression or uh, freedom of rights, and certainly a, a country with an enormous surveillance and intelligence apparatus. So is it appropriate for Snowden to be seeking asylum, permanent or temporary, in Russia? Andrea, I've had kind of two viewpoints with respect to Mr. Snowden. First of all, this debate should have started long, long, long ago by elected officials and not by government contractors. And second, when you have an individual who's been charged criminally, and of course he's been charged by espionage, I don't get into commenting on, uh, on those kinds of issues. But if you had a whistleblower like Mr. Snowden, hypothetically, who had these concerns and knew that you were uh, signaling and speaking out as best you could, there were other sympathetic witnesses on the Hill in intelligence community uh, roles on the committees, could he have gone, if not to the IG, couldn't he have gone to you? Yes, it would have been career ending, but he knew he was blowing up his career anyway. But couldn't he have sought protection from you and stayed within the United States rather than going to China, letting them get access presumably to his laptops, going to Russia and having all this stuff, uh, really damaging stuff about what we do to China and you know, what we do to Russia, get out there so, so quickly? Andrea, the challenging part of all this is the classification rules are exceptionally cumbersome. And one of the aspects of, of, of this debate that I feel strongly about is let's make sure that we protect secret operations, but you can't protect secret law. That's not in line with the American people. And what I think is, is going on now, and you see this in this big debate, whether it's Mr. Snowden or anybody else, is I'm not allowed to tap out the truth in Morse code in a way that's consistent with the classification rules. But we have been able to use those classification rules to make sure that the public really understands what's going on. For example, I was able to get declassified a FISA court finding, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court uh, finding, that the Fourth Amendment had been violated in at least one instance. We also were able to eliminate anti-whistleblower provisions from a piece of legislation. So it is cumbersome, I understand that, but we're still able, even with these difficult uh, uh, rules to uh, show we're standing up for our values and, and making sure people understand that liberty and security aren't mutually exclusive. Now, you and some of your unlikely allies have now changed the debate, and we saw this in the House vote, where they almost overturned the surveillance programs by defunding them. Now, presumably, the Senate would have done differently and the President would have vetoed it, but it was a very significant change in atmosphere. What can you accomplish now? Do you think you can get adversarial proceedings in front of the FISA court or a different appointment procedure for the FISA judges? Our side, Andrea, is gaining support every day. Senators and House members, regardless of political philosophy, are seeing that the FISA court process is one of the most one-sided approaches in American government. I know of no other court that doesn't have some kind of adversarial discussion where there are two points of view. So yes, I think we're going to make headway on that. I think starting tomorrow in the Judiciary Committee, we're going to see a debate about the uh, Patriot Act and particularly how you can take the current language to talk, which talks about relevance and let it morph into the collection of millions and millions of phone records on law-abiding Americans. Also, we had a big development last Friday when General Clapper, the head of the intelligence agencies, admitted that the community had violated these court orders on bulk phone record uh, collection. And I'll tell your viewers that those violations are significantly more troubling than the government has stated. Well, when you say things like that, we all listen because we know that you can't you can't spell it out, but last time uh, you were hinting at it, and uh, then we later learned a lot more details, of course. Well, they, courtesy they, of did, they did say last Friday that there had been violations of those court orders with respect to the bulk phone record collection. So that's on the record. I'll tell you those uh, violations are more serious than they stated. 
do you think there's a way that the phone companies could end up keeping these records rather than the government? Would that be an improvement? I think the idea of just contracting all this out to the phone companies still raises substantial uh, privacy issues. The real question is, what we've said in this country is, yes, security is critical. It is a dangerous time. We just saw that through the Boston Marathon. But we shouldn't be vacuuming up millions and millions of phone records on law-abiding Americans. Senator Udall and I, Senator Leahy, uh, colleagues, Mike Lee on the other side of the aisle all want to make sure that there is some sort of connection when you collect these records to an individual being involved with terrorism and when you get that information on an individual yes you ought to be able to see who they're uh, dealing with because there is uh, the possibility that there could be even more terrorists involved. Senator Ron Wyden thank you so much uh, we'll have to leave it there we hope we'll, you'll come back and we'll continue this conversation. Thank you. Thank sir. you.